moving on with infinite limits, um, we have talked about quite a few things. I left you talking about rational functions last time. Let us review the end behavior of rational functions. Remember, if we are in happy or middle face case, the infinite limits are going to be our horizontal asymptote. But what's going to happen during sad face case? I told you there is a way to do it without having to do the long division. And the way to do that is by using the official way of finding infinite limits. And that is to divide every term in the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator. And then use our limit property that we know here, a constant over x to some power. If we plug in either positive or negative infinity, that whole term is going to approach zero. So when we get down to sad face case, pretty much everything's going to disappear except for one variable x that we're going to have to plug in our positive and negative infinity into. Now, we're still going to have to figure out which infinity overrides the answer of positive infinity or negative infinity, and we know it's got to be either one of those because it's an oblique asymptote that it's going to follow at the edges of our graph. So let's use this information to finish up our last example of finding infinite limits both of positive infinity and negative infinity of this example here. I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can figure out this one on your own, and then come back and see if you've done the work correctly. All right, the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine the highest power of x in the denominator, and that is x, just x by itself. So I'm going to take each of these terms and I'm going to divide every single one of them by x. So 2 divided by x minus x cubed over x. That is all over 3x divided by x plus 1 divided by x. Now I'm going to simplify each of these terms if I can. So I have the limit as x is going to infinity. 2 over x I cannot do anything with. My minus, now this minus x cubed over x, one of those x's cancel out, and that leaves me with an x squared. Over 3x over x, those x's cancel out, leaving me with just 3, and then plus, 1 over x I cannot do anything with. I have everything exactly where I want it. All I need to do now is actually substitute in infinity. This piece here, 2 over x and 1 over x, that fits with our infinite limit property that says a constant over x to some power is going to go to 0. So those two pieces that I have circled there is going to go to 0. So this is 0 minus, now this x, that's the only x I really have anything left for, and I do actually have to plug in infinity there. So minus an infinity squared over, I have my 3 left, plus, and I already said this 1 over x reduces down to 0. At this point, I can figure out what my answer is. Remember, this is sad face case because my numerator degree is greater than my denominator degree. That means I have an oblique asymptote left. That means my answer has got to be either positive infinity or negative infinity. I just have to figure out which one it is. So on the top, I have negative infinity squared left, and in the bottom, I have 3. All right, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work here, but not much. If I take infinity and I square it, that's just going to give me a larger infinity. So infinity squared still simplifies down to infinity. Don't lose this negative. If I take a negative infinity and divide it by 3, that still just gives me infinity. So this simplifies down to a negative infinity. So that gives me my answer as x is approaching positive infinity, or the right-hand side of this graph. So my final answer to the limit 
as x is approaching positive infinity of this function, it is going to be negative infinity. Now, when I do the work for part b, it's mostly going to look the same. My first step is going to look the same. My second step is going to look the same. The only thing different is I'm not going to plug in positive infinity for my x. I'm going to plug in a negative infinity. So this is the step that I'm going to start at. I have 0 minus, I substitute in a negative infinity squared over 3 plus 0. So 0 minus a negative infinity squared. This cancels out to give me a positive infinity because anything squared is positive. And then this negative here copies over to my next step. On the bottom, I'm left with 3. So that gives me negative infinity. So my left-hand side of this graph is also going to approach negative infinity. So both in behavior of this graph, both the right and the left, are going to go both down at the very ends of the graph. And so now you've seen an example of a sad face case that has an oblique asymptote. You get to a point where you only have one variable left in your function, and you do need to substitute in either positive infinity or negative infinity into it, and then you're going to figure out what goes from there. But remember, your answer is either going to be positive or negative infinity, so you really only have to simplify signs from here on out. I have finished up all examples of both polynomial and rational functions of finding infinite limits, but I have one more video to show you, and that is, is how does this information get applied to a real-life situation? So we're going to work an applied example in my last video for this section.